The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Getting Started with Camtasia webinar. My name is Ryan Bort. I am the Brand Experience Coordinator here at TechSmith, and I will be the host today. Over the next 45 minutes, we'll be covering the basics of Camtasia 2019, from recording your screen to editing what you've recorded and then sharing what you've created. Uh, today we'll be using Camtasia 2019 on a PC. However, if you are using older versions or you are working off a of Mac, that's absolutely fine. Most of what we cover will still apply to you and we'll try to call out anything that's a little different. Following that 45 minute presentation, we'll have some time at the end for a Q&A. And uh, before we get into all that though, we do have a few housekeeping items we need to take care of. First, this webinar is being recorded um, and you will receive the recording via email after the event. So you can go back at your own pace if we see, or you can share it with colleagues. Uh, that way they can benefit from the webinar as well. You can always have your colleagues sign up for future webinars. We do offer these on a monthly basis. Next, I wanna encourage everyone to ask questions throughout the webinar. Um, we will have a Q&A time to answer questions live on screen at the end, but we do have a staff of Kelsey, Mike, Ryan, and... Alyssa. Sorry about that. Um, Kelsey, Mike, Ryan, and Alyssa, and they will be answering your questions in the chat if you have any there. Um, and then I want to remind you, or to let everyone know that we do have a survey at the end of the webinar, and that's just a great opportunity for you to share feedback with us in case uh, you have anything that you could share with us that can help us improve as we continue to offer these on a monthly basis. So now that that's all out of the way, I wanna introduce you to the person who will be taking you through Camtasia 2019 today, and that's Jason Vlad. Jason, good morning. Good morning, Ryan, and welcome to everyone. Thanks so much for joining us at our webinar today. Jason is a ATD Credentialed Master Trainer, and he is part of our new customer education team. So. He spends most of his time going through these products and he's the perfect person to take you through Camtasia. So Jason, I believe you were going to get us started with a short poll to learn a little bit more about who we have here today. That is correct. Thanks so much, Ryan, and thanks everyone once again for attending. Uh, what I wanted to do real quick today is go through a three short poll questions that allow you to make sure that you can um, let me know a little bit about who you are and who's in our audience today. So these are interactive, meaning if you see an answer that corresponds to you, go ahead and click on the screen to respond in the like. So first question is, are you the only person using Camtasia in your organization? Or is there a small group of you that are using them together, maybe two to six people? Did Or are you part of a group that everyone is using it? So over seven people or more are using Camtasia either collaboratively or on projects uh, independently. Just kind of get a sense of who's using Camtasia in your organization. We'll give everybody another second. <clears throat> All right, so it looks like uh, we're pretty split. 47% are running it solo and 44% are in small teams or small groups. That's actually how I work with Camtasia largely. And uh, the last one, 9% say lots of people are using it. So that's great to know. Thanks so much for sharing that information. Uh, the second question is multiple choice. That means you can choose more than one option. Uh, when your videos are done, where are the videos going to live? Are they going to live in uh, an LMS system, perhaps on a marketing website, maybe a cloud destination, YouTube, Vimeo, something like that. Uh, maybe an internal network drive or somewhere else. And if you happen to choose other and you're willing to share in that question and answers pane, I'll go ahead and type in there where you are going to share those videos. And we'll give everybody about another five or six seconds or so. All right. So at this point, it looks like we have 48% uh, are sharing to an LMS of some sort, 43% to a cloud destination, 41 to an internal network drive, and 20% marketing, 18% somewhere else. Great. Thanks. One more question. This one's super easy. Do you happen to know what version of Camtasia you're using right now? Do you have the newest one, Camtasia 2019, perhaps last year's 2018, slightly older version? Uh, maybe you're on the trial and kind of discovering a little bit more about Camtasia, or you don't have it yet and you're evaluating what... Uh, what Camtasia can do for you. All right, so 
it looks like overwhelmingly 76% of you are using the newest version, Camtasia 2019, with a smattering of others along the way. Great. Thanks so much for answering those poll questions. I really appreciate it. Now let's get into getting started with Camtasia. So on the screen, you should see the Camtasia welcome window. This is the window that you'll see when you launch Camtasia for the first time. It's actually a great starting point for people because you can do a lot of things right here from the getting started window. You can open uh, existing projects. You can start a brand new recording. You can even start a new project and open it up here into the editor. You also have a list of recent projects that you might have been working on. I've been kind of busy over the last couple of days. And then you have what we call the carousel here at the bottom where there's links that constantly change to show you places where you can learn more information about Camtasia or other TechSmith products. Uh, here you have a link right to our tutorials, uh, a link to the webinar page, which perhaps is how you found our webinar today or to the TechSmith Academy, which is a free online resource to learn uh, more about the video creation process itself. So Camtasia, is broken up into two parts. There is the recorder window, and then there's the editor window. Uh, we're gonna start with the recorder, and because of that, we're just gonna open up this new recording window. And when I click on that, I am presented with this. This is the Camtasia recorder. And the recorder is where you're gonna start any of your projects if there's going to be screen recorder or capture happening here on your computer. Before I walk too deep into this, I always want to make sure people know that the way I walk through this is I have people that are using Camtasia answer three simple questions. What do they want people to be able to see? Do you want them to see you? And can they hear you? And those three questions, the answers to them, correspond to different parts of the recorder window itself. So first one, what do I want people to be able to see? Uh, that corresponds with this. This is the select area part of the recorder. And we have two options. We have the ability to record full screen, which means anything that's in your screen's visible area would be captured. So for me, uh, I'm just gonna make a small adjustment here and pull down this dotted green line. Uh, that area, that lit up area is the part that would be recorded. And anything that's darker over here on the sides and the top uh, would not be captured. So when I click full screen, it takes on the full uh, resolution and screen area of my desktop. So if you want everything captured, that's the option I would choose. You also have the ability to choose a custom region, which has a little drop down menu associated with it. And you can pick different resolutions. Uh, you can pick recent areas that perhaps you had already captured. You even have the ability to select an area to record, which would you bring up the crosshairs and allow you to click and drag over a region. For our practice today and for today's webinar, we're actually gonna do a full screen recording. So I'm gonna leave this one checked. So the second question is, do you want people to be able to see you? So Camtasia has the ability not only to record your screen, but to record your webcam at the same time. And people tend to include webcams to give a little bit of a human touch to their videos, to show that it's a, not a faceless robot delivering their videos. Uh, to turn on the camera, you simply click on this button and it will turn on whatever your primary camera is. So, hi, that's me, I'm Jason. I actually have a couple of cameras plugged into my computer so I can choose between the two. One is this HD Pro webcam, the other one is a uh, Logitech Brio and you can actually select different ones. So now I'm facing a different area. Um, so you can have those cameras on while you're recording as well. Uh, for today's webinar, wow, for today's demo in the webinar, I am not gonna use my camera, so I'm gonna toggle that one off. So we answered, what do I want people to be able to see? We answered, do we want them to see us? And then we wanna decide, can they hear us? So you can also record your spoken word with Camtasia. And right now my microphone is off by indicating this uh, red X here. So to turn it on, I simply turn that on by clicking on it and I make sure that Camtasia is hearing my voice. And I can tell that it's hearing my voice because the audio input meter is jumping up and down. Now, just like the camera before, there is a drop down menu right next to the audio that allows you to pick different uh, audio sources. For me, I have my microphone, my primary microphone here. I also have a little, uh, hockey puck speaker next to me that serves as a microphone. So you wanna choose the one that is appropriate for your recording environment. And for me, it's this microphone that I'm talking to you right now for the webinar, this uh, Audio-Technica 2020 USB. The goal of your audio input, uh, you obviously wanna test it for yourself, but the goal is to keep your voice somewhere in the green to the green yellow area. So if I talk a little bit closer and get a little louder, you'll see the audio meter jump up. And if I get really loud or really close, it goes way too high in this orange and red area. So you wanna keep yourself somewhere in the green to green and yellow area for good sound quality, okay? Now, uh, before we get too far, then we hit record and answer some questions here, there is something else I wanna to talk to you about. 
And that is, if you've ever consumed a video, if you've ever watched a video online, uh, whether it's on YouTube or on an internal site or whatever you happen to consume videos in, and you see a video that has black bars, black bars either on the sides or on the top and bottom, and you can kind of tell those black bars are not there for artistic purposes, or if the video seems a little bit fuzzy to you, that probably means that the person creating the video has scaled or tried to resize that video. Well, video doesn't scale real well. So I always give everyone this particular tip. If you record, edit, and share your video at the same dimensions, you're gonna have a very good, crispy looking video. So recording is what we're gonna do here where we're gonna record my full screen, which is at a full 1080 resolution. When I edit, I'm gonna make sure I'm doing it at 1080 and I'll show you how that looks. And then when I share it, I wanna share it at 1080 as well. The other things I want you to note is that when you're ready to hit record, uh, there's a couple ways you can do it. One, you can hit the red record button. And when you start the recording, the recorder is gonna disappear and Camtasia is gonna give you a three, two, one countdown. And after the countdown is completed, everything you say and everything you do will be captured by Camtasia. If you're using a single monitor setup, like I happen to be today, that recorder will disappear. And in order to stop the recording, you either have to come down into your task manager and find it down here, or use some conveniently created hotkeys to start and stop your recording. To start your recording, in fact, when I hover over it, it shows you, you can hit your F9 button. F9 will start the recording process for you within Camtasia. If you need to pause your recording for any reason, perhaps uh, you forgot to turn off a notification or someone's knocking at your door, you can hit F9 again to pause and then F9 again to resume. So that starts, pauses, and resumes your recording. When you're done and you're all set and ready to edit, you can hit the F10 key and F10 will stop your recording and bring that captured area and media into the editor for editing. Okay. So uh, before I hit record, and I'm going to actually do a sample recording of how to find tutorials on the TechSmith website, which we will use then to show how to edit and what the editor looks like in Camtasia. I'd like to take a quick second and ask Ryan and the team at TechSmith, have there been any questions that have come in so far regarding the recorder or perhaps the preparatory steps for recording with Camtasia? Yeah, Jason, we actually have a few here for you. So the first one I'm gonna start you off with is from Rochelle. She wants to know, will the camera video record as a separate media file so I can move it around when I get to the editing stage? Yep. Yes, it will. It's a great question. So when Camtasia records your screen and your webcam at the same time, both of those items come into the editor as individual pieces of media. That means they can be edited independently. So uh, often I'll start with a webcam on my videos just to introduce myself and then I'll move that um, camera off to the side or perhaps animate it to disappear off the screen and leave the screen recording happening as it does. Um, yeah. In fact, we talk a lot about that in our deeper dive into Camtasia webinar sessions. So if you're interested in those, uh, definitely check out our webinar page because we go very deep into utilizing uh, multiple pieces of media. But yes, it does record as a separate piece of media. Great. And the next question I have is from Melissa. Um, she wants to know, and this can kind of work both ways. She wants to know, can you record just your voice with no video at all? And then we've got a couple asking if you can record just video, just your camera. Um, so can you record independently? Um, so yes and no. I cannot, as it stands right now with uh, Camtasia here for Windows, record just my voice. Now in the editor, you can do voice recording. So instead of opening the recorder, I could use the voice narration tool, which I'll point out when we get into the editor. If you just want to do a voice recording, that is possible. Um, I don't have to record my voice. I can simply toggle the uh, microphone off and just record my screen and perhaps voice it over later or... Uh, like we do in our team, some of us record the videos and then others do the voiceover. So there's a couple different ways that you can do that. If you want to just record the webcam in your voice, uh, you'd still record the screen because that's the way it's currently set up. And then all you would do is delete the screen recording and you could just have the webcam if you were going to do sort of a, a talking head or an introduction. That's how I would handle that. Perfect. And then I've got one last question for you, Jason, before we jump into the editor. Um, Can you let us know some of the consistent screen recording? And then I've got a bunch of other people asking about what the best practice for selecting um, resolution size is. Sure. So you broke up a little, Ryan, but I think you were talking about considerations when re when selecting a resolution that's not full screen. 
Um, so yeah. yep, and then also yeah, we did get some other ones about what should I record when I am recording full screen as well. Sure. Okay. Yep. So full screen recording, the way I always show people is you want to record at the highest possible resolution that you have available on your monitor. For example, uh, the monitor that I'm on right now, if I right click on the desktop and go to display settings, you'll see that my monitor is actually 2560 by 1440. That's 2K. That's a 2K resolution monitor. I have a lot of other options within here, but this is the highest resolution I have available to me. So if I record at full screen, which I'm going to do, I'm going to actually be recording in 2K. When I do my editing, I want to do editing at it, the highest resolution that I have available for that, which inside of Camtasia is 1080p. The long and the short of it is, if I start with a much, much bigger capture area, the 2K, and I edit it in a smaller area, then all the colors and all the sharpness is going to be there. If I were doing the reverse, if I recorded it at 1080 and tried to edit it bigger, it's going to scale. And I don't know if you remember, anytime you've grabbed a picture or a video and you try and scale it up on its own or make it bigger, it starts to become fuzzy and pixelated. That's the, the process by which we want to avoid. So I always start with the biggest, greatest resolution I have available to me and then edit and produce at that same resolution or slightly smaller. And then the video ends up really nice. It allows for you to do zooming and panning and be able to show great detail on your video without it looking fuzzy or distorted. When you're doing that okay, same... Okay, I think that's... Yeah, go ahead. I was, I was uh, the only thing I was going to say is if you're going to be doing the other uh, resolutions, you could select those here, and that'll actually give you a representation on your screen of what that size would look like. Uh, but bottom line is I always, always, always go with the best, highest resolution I have available to me. It gives me more flexibility as an editor. <clears throat> Sorry to cut okay. you off, Brian. And Jason, that is... That is the end of uh, the questions we have right now that relate to just the recorder. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and hop into the editor and we'll grab some of those questions at the end. Sounds great. All right. So I just brought up a web page. In fact, I brought up techsmith.com and I'm going to use techsmith.com as the page that I'm going to capture for this demo. What we're going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is we're going to walk through how to find tutorials on the TechSmith website. I am going to capture it with Camtasia and then we're going to use that capture to go into the editor and show you around the editor and how to do some light editing. So just like I said before, I've got my full screen recording set, not going to record my webcam. And I make sure that the microphone that I want to record is set up here in Camtasia. And then I can start my recording by either hitting the red record button or by hitting the F9 key on my keyboard. For this, I'm going to start my recording by hitting the red button. And then when I stop, I'm actually going to use that F10 keyboard shortcut on my keyboard to stop. All right. So this would take just about a minute. Here we go. Hello everyone. I'd like to show you how easy it is to find tutorials on the TechSmith website. First, go to techsmith.com in your favorite web browser. At the top of the screen, locate the support menu, and then click on tutorials. Here you'll be brought to the tutorials and training page on techsmith.com where you'll find a list of all the software that TechSmith makes. Today, we want to learn a little bit more about Camtasia, so let's click on Camtasia. And this is the Camtasia tutorial page. At the top of the page, you'll see a series of videos called Learn the Basics. By watching these five videos and spending 30 minutes or less, you'll actually get the general overview of the basic functionality of Camtasia. When you're ready, or you want to up your skill set with specific parts of Camtasia, Return to this page and scroll down to the All Tutorials section, where you can learn more about specific tools, perhaps about device frames, or maybe getting that crisp, clear video we spoke about before, or even audio editing. I hope you found this useful, and thanks for watching. All right, so I hit the F10 key when I was done recording, which is going to launch Camtasia in its editor mode, and then we'll take a look around the editor. <clears throat> So this is the Camtasia editor, and the editor itself is broken up into four particular parts. The media bin and tool area and the library over here on the left, the canvas here in the center, the properties drawer over on the right-hand side, and then the uh, 
timeline here at the bottom where you're going to do some of your editing as well. And we're going to go through each one of these parts lightly, but before we do anything, always, 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 we're going to save our project. Because right now at the very top of the screen, you'll see it says TechSmith Camtasia Untitled Project. I'm going to give you a little bit of a tip here. First thing first, when you go to File and Save, whenever I start a project, I always create a folder so that I know what the project is going to be called. So I'm going to just put one on my desktop and we'll call this uh, webinar. And inside that webinar folder, I'm going to name the project the same as the folder to keep an eye on uh, where those things are. That way, if for some reason I move something on my computer or something gets uh, saved in a different position, I know that if they're named the same, they go together. So when I hit save, it's going to save it as a TSC proj or a TechSmith project file, which can only be opened by Camtasia. I hit save. Camtasia tells me that it is now a uh, TSC project file that can be opened by Camtasia. And when I hit OK, I now have a new project called Webinar. Then I had spoken to you about those three things to record, edit, and share in the same resolution, same dimensions. Well, we recorded at 1080, or excuse me, at 2K. If I come up here to the drop down menu at the top of the screen and go to my project settings, it will actually set itself because the first thing that was put into the project was our screen recording at the highest possible canvas dimensions that match my recording. So 1080p is the highest that it'll show for my recording. It does show 4K capability, but I didn't record in 4K, so I don't want to make it bigger. I want to keep it at the one that's recommended, which is the 1080p, and it will be done by default if this is the first thing you bring into your editor. So that means two of those three pieces of advice have been already taken care of. I recorded and edited at the best possible resolution that I had available. All right, so let's start over here on the left. On the left, we have our media bin, library, and tool area. So let's walk through that. The media bin itself is this. The media bin is where the media that you're going to use for this particular project is kept. As of right now, there's only one piece of media in there, and that's this T-Rec file. Uh, this is the TechSmith recording screen recording that we just did a couple minutes ago. So right now, that's the only thing in my media bin. The library tab immediately below that is where you would actually keep media that you're going to use for multiple projects or across multiple projects. As a matter of fact, when you install Camtasia for the first time, you get a pre-installed library. In this case, it's Camtasia 2019 library. And in this library, there's a series of icon packs. There's a series of animated introductions, uh, animated lower thirds, motion backgrounds, uh, music tracks, and outros. And the intros, lower thirds and outros are all customizable. They're just coming in as templates. So you can actually quickly uh, change them to match branding for your company. That also is something we cover in that deeper dive webinar, if you're interested. The library is also where you can save content that you wanna use across multiple projects. So if you have an image that you wanna use or a particular piece of music that you like with your videos, or perhaps a company logo, those sorts of things you can save to your library. You also have a whole series of tools. You've got the annotations tool, which is largely what Camtasia is known for. Uh, these uh, callout styles, um, there are various colorways and styles underneath this drop down, but you have callouts, which are text based uh, shapes. You've got arrows, basic shapes themselves. Uh, you have this, which is a blur and highlight area. One of my favorite tools because there's lots of functionality you can do within here. You have the sketch motion callout tools. You even have the ability to put keyboard keystroke callouts right on the screen. So if you're teaching people how to do keyboard shortcuts, you can have those right on the screen to back up what you're talking about verbally. You also have transitions, which are the ability to add a change between pieces of media. Uh, if you've ever made a PowerPoint presentation, you've seen like the page curls or the fades, those capabilities are in here as well. You have behaviors, which are the ability to add animations and transitions right onto pieces of text and media without having to do much of anything. It's literally a click and drag. We have the animations tool, which allows you to do your zooming and panning and moving items around your canvas. You have cursor effects, including the new one we added with 2019, which is uh, the ability to do cursor smoothing. Uh, I'll be adding that to my project in just a second. We have voice narration, which we talked about before, where I could voice something over or if I just wanted to record my voice for a piece of uh, video, I could do that from here. And you've got audio effects, visual effects, and more. Lots you can do over here in the tool area. 
The second part of the editor is this. This is the canvas, and this is where you're going to get a visual representation of your video. Uh, the canvas itself, I'm going to just use my scroll wheel on my mouse and just kind of scroll out a little bit. If I click and drag this media, you'll actually see that there is a dark area of the screen and then a lighter outside area. The dark area is the actual uh, canvas itself where the video, if when produced, anything that's in that area would be shown in the video. So if I shared this video right now, uh, it would be a very confusing, un uninteresting video because the only thing that would show up is this little area here in the corner while the rest of it would be black. So this gives you an idea of what is being shown for your video and that there's areas around the outside where you could possibly stage things. Like if you wanted a, an arrow to fly in from off the screen, you could put it over here and slide it over to the right and a couple different things you could do within there. The canvas itself can be moved around. It's by uh, using tools up here. You also have the ability to crop media up at the top of your screen. To the right is the properties panel. And the properties panel is where you can actually do a lot of different changes depending on the type of media that you have selected. Uh, in this case, the only thing I have selected is our screen recording. So I can affect different things based on the tabs exposed at the top of the screen. Right now I have the media tab selected so I could actually change its scale so I can make it bigger or smaller. If I wanted to, for some reason, uh, change its opacity, I can make it a little bit more see-through. Or if I wanted it to fade away, I can make adjustments right here in the properties panel. Uh, because this also has my spoken word built into it, and I'll show you what that looks like here, uh, I actually have some gain control over here as well. I also have the ability to make changes to my mouse. And let's make our first change right now. Uh, the mouse capability I have is the ability to scale it, and I have the ability to change its opacity. Because even in my screen recording, my mouse over here is very, very tiny. So let's, for fun, let's move it up to maybe, I don't know, 200%. Well, close to 200. Let's go... Let's go 211 just for fun there. So now I have a oversized mouse for my purposes, but for those who are consuming this video, it'll be easier for them to follow. I also have the ability to, once again, fade it in and out or change its opacity, depending on whether or not I want it seen or not seen on the screen. Lastly, but certainly not least, is the timeline. And the timeline's down here at the bottom of the screen. So the timeline is a linear timeline. That simply means the playhead, which is right here, starts at zero minutes, zero seconds, and plays through the entire video. And then when it gets to the end here on the right, wherever the media stops, that's the end of your video. Uh, the playhead, there's a lot of things you can do with it. In fact, there's a big part of it, which has these green and red tabs on either side. This is actually a selection tool that allows you to make selections on your timeline for making very quick, precise edits. And we'll do a few of those here in a second. Also of note, uh, the timeline only has one track on it right now, and that is our screen recording. And the screen recording also has my spoken word on it, the audio that I spoke. You can see the WAV files down here at the bottom of the screen. Other thing to note is right above the timeline is a little ribbon of tools, really helpful tools, including the undo tool. That's a really helpful one if you make an oopsie. You have the ability to cut and copy as well as paste and split from here. So let's do some editing. We already did one small piece, which is where we made these cursor actually a little bit scaled up. Um, I want you to notice uh, when I'm going to play this video back here for a second, but I'm going to play it from here so that people can see um, the mouse movement. And we can start the playback by doing one of two things. We can either hit the play button here below the canvas itself, or we can use the keyboard shortcut of the space bar. The space bar will play pause and resume recordings as well, or the playback as well. So let's just watch the video for just a second, and I'd like you to pay attention to the mouse movement best you can. At the top of the screen, locate the support menu, and then click on Tutorials. So I'm not sure if you noticed or not, but as the mouse is moving, it's kind of a jagged movement. It's not very fluid. It's not very smooth. Um, I use a rollerball mouse. And I also talk with my hands a lot. So when I move my mouse, I kind of do one of these numbers where I'm just kind of moving it all over the place. Well, we actually can help you out with that. And the way we can do that is by going over here to the cursor effects and choosing cursor smoothing. It'll actually take those jagged mouse movements and make them very fluid. And it's easy to add to your project. All you need to do is click and drag it down to the piece of media that you want to affect. And as soon as I drag it on there and it turns green around the outside and I let go, now my mouse movement will be much, much smoother. So we'll play this back again. Watch that same mouse movement where it goes up to the support menu 
and so on and so forth. At the top of the screen, locate the support menu and then click on tutorials. So just by making that small adjustment by adding cursor smoothing to the timeline, I've made a much more polished professional video. All right, let's go with the next thing we're gonna do. And that is we're gonna do some, what I call wholesale cuts. Wholesale cuts is when I make cuts to the media that are just big and glaring and I can do them real quickly. Uh, for me, by looking down here on the timeline, I can actually see large gaps of time where I wasn't speaking. That's probably because pages were loading. In fact, when I hit the tutorials button here, we were waiting for this page to load. Well, we can easily cut those sections out by placing the playhead right where we want the cut to start, using that selection tool to click and drag to the right here. And then I can hit the scissors tool or the cut tool over here. And what'll happen is this section of media will get removed and everything over here to the right will move over to the left and be stitched together so it's one smooth uh, piece of video. So if I hit cut, just like that, I cut out three seconds of video. And how do I know? I, let me click undo here. Um, below the canvas here, it says my video is one minute and four seconds long. Well, if I make that cut, now it goes from one minute and four seconds down to one minute and one second. So I've eliminated three seconds of dead air, basically, to help my viewer. And I can do it again because I know there's another section where I clicked on Camtasia and then was waiting for the page to load again. So I can make the selection with the selection tool and hit the cut button. And just like that, I now have a 59 second video. So you can use that selection tool to make some very surgical cuts. And if I need to see it in greater detail, there is a zoom slider over here on the left where I can actually zoom into the timeline itself to see very specific little spots. Uh, this is really good for me getting rid of ums, uhs, and perhaps any mouth noises or a cough or something like that. I can use the selection tool and the zoom capability to make very precise surgical cuts. And then to come back out, I can just zoom out or I can click on this, which is the magnifying glass. If I click on it, it actually brings the entire project into the viewable area. So I can see everything from the beginning of the video all the way here to the end. Next, the video itself, if I bring the playhead all the way back here to the left, when I start the video, it just kind of starts, right? There's, it just bam, right there on the screen. I'm not a real big fan of that. So I'm actually going to use Camtasia's transition tools. So I'm gonna click on transitions. There's lots of choices here. There's whip spins and cube rotates and slides, but for my, for my money, I'm a big person that uses fades. So I'm gonna click and drag the fade transition down onto my timeline. And before I add it to the media, I want you to notice there's a little yellow spot here on the beginning on the left, and there's a little yellow spot over here on the right. Uh, that's indicating where the transition would be applied if I drag it onto the timeline. If I drag it just here to the right, that area light, lights up green, which means it would fade out. If I drag it over here to the left, it would show that it would fade in, but I kind of want it to fade in and out. So all I need to do is drag it to the center of the screen, center of the media, and let go. And now I have a fade in and I have a fade out. So if we play this video back for a second. Hello everyone. I'd like to show you how easy. That's a simple little thing to do, adding that transition, but it adds a professional polish with very little effort. I love it. All right. Next thing I wanna do is there's a portion of the video where I start talking about going to techsmith.com. Um, this is a web browser and I can probably rest assured that someone who's watching this video has been to a web browser before, but I wanna be sure. So I'm gonna actually use some of the editing tools in Camtasia to zoom into this upper left-hand corner. And to do that, we're gonna place the playhead where we want the zoom to start or where we want it to finish. So if I bring the playhead here and I'm gonna play it. First, go to techsmith.com. So go to TechSmith.com in your favorite web browser. I just said that. So for here, I'm going to uh, bring the playhead right here, go to the Animations tab. And then here on my Windows computer, I have a tab that's called Zoom and Pan. To perform a Zoom and Pan, I select the media that I want to affect by clicking on it. And I know it's been selected because there's a yellow outline. And I'm going to simply use these radio buttons to click and drag focus of my screen where I want that focus to be. Okay, so I dragged it up to the left, which then zooms it in over here on the upper left-hand side of my screen. Okay, 
the biggest thing I want you to notice is down here on the timeline, when I started moving the zoom and pan thing screen, I got this little arrow. Let's uh, zoom in on it here a little bit. This arrow down here on the timeline is an animation arrow. What happens in Camtasia is the playhead hits the tail of the arrow, and then during the time it's covering that arrow, the animation happens. So the length of the arrow corresponds to the duration or the speed at which the animation, or in this case, zoom happens. So when I bring my playhead back and hit play, first go to techsmith.com in your favorite web browser. It does that zoom activity for me. It zooms into that upper left-hand corner where I wanted it to. Well, here I can rely on a couple other tools to draw attention to that area. I could perhaps draw an arrow on the screen. Um, I could have a call out pop up. Uh, for my money, I'm gonna actually go to the animations, or excuse me, to the annotations tab. And I'm gonna go to my favorite tool underneath the blur and highlight area. And that is this, this one here, it's a spotlight tool. To add the spotlight to the canvas, all I knew is to click and drag it over here on the screen. And as you notice, just the area where the box is stays lit and the rest of it is darkened. And while I have it selected, the properties panel over here on the right has changed. It's given me properties that are specific to that piece of media. In this case, I can actually change the intensity of this uh, spotlight tool. Right now it's at 50%. Let's bring it up to say maybe 76%. That actually darkens the screen even more around it to really draw focus to where I'm talking about the, uh, the web address. Down here on our timeline, we can see where that spotlight has shown up. So I can actually take that piece of media and I can move it wherever I want. In this case, I'm gonna have it happen right as the zoom finishes. But that's kind of abrupt. It just kind of pops on your screen. So just like any other piece of media, I can apply other tools to it as well. Just like we did the zoom, or excuse me, the fade in and fade out to our screen recording, I can add a transition, perhaps a fade in and fade out, to the spotlight itself. So now it's a little bit more classy when it zooms in, and then fades out or fades into that uh, spotlight. Hey, Jason. Yes. That's actually a good time to talk about. We had a question come in about whether or not you can edit um, the transitions, the length of the transitions. So could you show quickly while you've got one up how you do, would do that? Sure, sure. So the question was the transition itself. So right here is the zooming and panning action. If you select that arrow and I decide that that zoom is way too fast, I can actually click and drag either side of the arrow to lengthen it or shorten it depending on what I want. So maybe we'll uh, lengthen it up here a little bit and we'll add the ability to uh, slow that zoom down a little bit. So if we play this back. First, go to techsmith.com in your favorite web browser at the top. There we go, that's a little less jarring. So I think that's what you were talking about, Ryan. We actually made this transition a little bit slower as we zoomed into the screen. And then the and then those, the transition on that on track two, the yep. green bars. So yep. the, while you're in the media and you have the media selected, you can actually click on the transitions themselves and make adjustments. So if I wanted to fade in faster or fade out faster or slower, I can make adjustments to that just as easily as I can make adjustments to the piece of media itself. So now we should have a slower zoom in and a quicker fade in and fade out. First, go to techsmith.com in your favorite web browser at the top of the screen. Okay, just like that. Uh, were there other questions surrounding that, Ryan? Nope, that was it, thanks. Sure, great. Uh, at this point, we can then uh, go on with the video where it starts talking about going to the support menu, but we see the support menu is over here on the right. It's kind of out of focus of the screen. So I can actually select the screen recording just like before, go back to my animations tool, and instead of zooming in, I can actually click and drag that focus area over here to the right. And I'll put it right about there. And that creates a panning motion or a movement from right to left or left to right. So if we watch our video. Go to techsmith.com in your favorite web browser. At the top of the screen, locate the support menu. And then click on tutorial. So there's a lot you can still do with this. You could uh, then highlight this area, um, move it around the screen. Uh, one thing people always ask about is how do I get, I'm already zoomed in, how do I get back to a full screen? You can actually do that by selecting the media that you want to affect. In this case, it's our screen recording. Coming back up to the zoom and pan area and clicking scale to fit, it'll add an animation that brings it back to that entire visible area. So now when you play it back and it says click on tutorials, it'll actually zoom out 
to a full screen. So while there could be a lot more editing we could do, I want to get us to the point where we can share this video out because so we have time for everybody's questions. So let's pretend this video is complete. So at this point, we would want to share it outside of Camtasia because right now it is a TSC project file and the only thing that can open a TSC project file is Camtasia. But we want the masses to be able to see the video. So we can do it by going up here to the upper right hand corner to the share button. And when I click on it, you're given a couple of options. You can either produce this as a local file, which would mean saving this MP4 to perhaps your desktop or a, a network attached drive or internal drive that's connected. I actually do this quite often. We share things that way. Uh, there's some cloud destinations like screencast.com, which is a TechSmith hosting solution. Uh, we have TechSmith video review for those of you in those small groups. Uh, this is a great uh, tool to be able to upload a video and have people respond to it and make comments and suggestions so you can further your editing capabilities. We've got Vimeo, YouTube, the ability to share to Google Drive. I actually use this one more often than I thought I would lately, just on different ways that my team uses it. And then we have the ability to send it to uh, TechSmith Relay as well, which is a um, um, like a system-wide hosting solution with quizzing capabilities. Uh, for, this cap for this video today, we're just going to produce this as a local file. So I'm going to click Local File. And that brings up our production wizard with a drop down menu of all the options we just talked about and then plenty of others below it. Now, remember our rule record, edit, and share at the same destinations if possible to get that very, very good looking video, crispy looking video. In this case, I recorded at 2K, I edited it at 1080p, so I'm going to produce it at at least 1080p. I don't want to go bigger because that would make it fuzzy. I could go smaller but I wanna give the best possible viewing re results for my audience. So I'm gonna click uh, MP4 only up to 1080p. When I click next, it's gonna ask me to name it. It'll take the name from the project as it is, but you could always name it something else if you'd like. And then you can always put it in whatever destination you want. In this case, we'll just go right back to my desktop, to that folder, just keeping it all in the same place. It'll save it as a webinar. Webinar, it saves it as webinar because that's what I named it. When I click save, and I click finish, it'll begin to render. Now the time it takes to render and the speed at which it renders is dependent on a lot of things. How long is the video? How, com how complex is it? Uh, the capabilities of your computer. I've got a pretty fast computer, pretty strong one, and this is only a minute long video. So it does the rendering in a quick time frame, And just like that, the video is complete. So if I go to that folder on my desktop and I go into the webinar folder, there is that MP4. Hello everyone. I'd like to show you how easy it is to find tutorials on the TechSmith website. First, go to TechSmith.com in your favorite web browser. At the top of the screen, locate the support menu, and then click on tutorials. Well, and you guys all saw the rest because you were here for it live. So uh, that's how I would then take that MP4 and put it wherever I want. I could still upload it and load it to a um a share destination, a cloud destination through normal processes, uh, but it is ready and raring to go. So Ryan, we just went through a lot of stuff. We went through all the recorder, the basic settings in the recorder, the record, edit, produce, same settings. We then went into the editor and walked through the editor, the four major parts, the media bin, the canvas, the properties drawer, as well as the uh, timeline. Uh, we saved our project. We then did some light editing with annotating and zooming, and we did some... Uh, some um, transitions and whatnot. We also then uh, produced our video ready for the world. So uh, we're at a point where I'd love to see what other questions might have come in either regarding the editing process around the recorder from earlier or anything Camtasia related. Yeah, um, I get just started with a question from Joseph here. Joseph's asking, is there a keyboard shortcut for going to the beginning of the timeline and for zooming out completely. So I wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of show some navigation tips and tricks, Jason. Sure, yep, so there is keyboard shortcuts, but they are actually different for everybody. And let me show you why. Um, inside the editor, if you go to edit and preferences, there is a tab called shortcuts. Now with the release of Camtasia 2019, we actually took the ability for you to edit and change your shortcuts from only eight different tools to over 80. So each one of these different tool sets has the ability for you to 
uh, change the keyboard shortcut within Camtasia for your use cases. So you're talking about timeline editing. Uh, to go all the way back to the beginning, uh, you've got the ability to um, move between clips, to jump to the beginning of the timeline as control home for this case, uh, zooming in and zooming out on the timeline. All these capabilities are here within the shortcuts preferences menu. So you can actually change it to however you want to utilize Camtasia. I actually made some changes on mine because I use both the Windows and Mac version and I wanted to have keyboard shortcuts that were similar, if not same. Perfect. Um, so then I got a question for you from Anna. Jason, Anna wants to know, how do you upload new items or external items from your library? Maybe that you didn't screen record. Okay, so over here in the media bin, you have the ability to add uh, external content. Uh, that you maybe have saved on your computer or somewhere else. Uh, the easiest way to do it in the media bin is to click on the plus button down here in the left-hand side and then navigate either from Google Drive or from your computer itself. So if I go here to, oh, I don't know, uh, my desktop, I have a link for training materials and I could go in and bring in any other piece of media that I want. Maybe I want a, a first frame PNG. So I now have this frame of just part of a demo I did before, which looks very familiar. Uh, I can actually bring this piece of media into my project at that point. Whenever I want it in my library, I would simply add it to my project. And while it's on the timeline, and I make any changes I want to it, length of time, stuff like that, I can right click on the piece of media and choose add to library. And when I do that, it actually asks you to name it. It'll take the name it has, but you can always customize the name. And then you can choose which library you want it in. Uh, not only do we have the library that's pre-built, but you can actually build different libraries within Camtasia so that you can have things for specific projects. Hope that answers your question, Anna. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Uh -huh. Um, hey, Jason, we got a couple of questions about um, callouts and annotations, which I know we didn't have a ton of time to get to today. Um, so some people are asking about how to add them. And then um, specifically, Sharmila wants to know, she's seen, she noticed that all the arrows only point one direction, and she wants to know how she can get them to point a different direction. Yep. So let's, uh, so we added a annotation, the, the, the uh, spotlight callout before, but maybe we want to add a arrow that points at, say, the support menu. If I go into my annotations tool and go back to those callouts, and I wanna grab, let's say this red arrow. Now you're right, it's pointing to the right. Uh, in order to point it to the left, you simply grab the uh, ra uh, rotation button here and just click it and drag it around to the left. And now I have an arrow pointing to the uh, left. I have control over this arrow completely. I can resize it, I can make it shorter, longer, bigger, however I want. Um, they do have text in them. If I want text in it, I double click on it and type text. So maybe I want to say, support. That's not how you spell support. Or if I don't want anything in there, I can highlight it and delete it. Now it's just a big red arrow. And while you have that piece of media selected, whether it's a call out or not, you do have control over it and what it can do over here in your properties panel. Uh, everything from basic stuff like its size, you know, if I want to scale it up smaller or scale it bigger, I have control over here, uh, including its opacity and position. Uh, in this case, because it's a call out that has text, I have the ability to change its text style, the color, the spacing, justification, stuff like that. And the call out itself, while I did select an arrow, I actually have the choices from a lot of the other uh, styles. Maybe instead of uh, an arrow, I wanted a thought bubble, which is now upside down. Maybe I wanted a speech bubble. Maybe I wanted just a text rectangle. All of the call outs that you see over here are basically templates. They're basic shapes that you can start from. And if I didn't want this red color, or let's go back to our arrow for this. Instead of this red color, maybe I wanted to match this yellow on the screen. I can either use the drop down menu here and pick the color that's closest to it. Or like me, because I'm not a designer and I'm super lazy, I use the eyedropper tool by clicking on the eyedropper and then just hovering over the color I want. And now all of a sudden my arrow matches exactly what's on the screen. So that's the way you would add a call out. You simply click the one you want, and drag it over here to the screen. And there are lots of other styles under here. In fact, if I click all, there's lots of different styles and colors that you can start from uh, to add to your project right away. So you don't have to be uh, set in your ways from the default ones that are available. Ryan, was there some other questions that might have come in? 
Oh, thanks, Jason. Yep. Um, the next question I have for you is from Stuart. Uh, Stuart is asking about some audio editing. He says, is it good practice to always split out the audio from the video and have two tracks, or should I leave them together? Um, thanks for the question, Stuart. That's dependent on your workflow. So there's a couple of different things that you can look at. And let's, let's, uh, let's bring to light what you're talking about. I'm just going to bring the audio track up here and just shift my editor up just a little bit, my canvas. So in this particular case, the recording came in with my screen recording and audio baked into one. If I record with my webcam, the screen recording comes in by itself and on track two, there'd be a webcam with audio. The audio is baked in for a couple different reasons. One is so that if you make any edits to the uh, the the length of your video or sections of your video, the audio stays in sync with what's happening on the screen. However, there may be a reason or a case where you want to separate the audio out. Uh, you can do that by right clicking on the media itself and choose separate audio and video. If you do that, that audio and video are separated forever. They can be grouped together later, but they are not locked in uh, anymore. So they are separate pieces of media. Why would you do this? Well, sometimes people use this as their scratch audio and then have someone else voice over the vo video later on, or perhaps they want to make small cuts and move audio pieces around. They could do all that as well. Um, let me undo it so they're baked back together. One thing you will note is if you select the media that has audio in it, one of the tabs in the upper part of the properties panel is that audio setting. And when you click on that, the audio itself actually turns green. And this gives you a couple more pieces of control. One, this is the overall volume of your of your audio. You can raise it up and raise it down, depending on if there's different parts that you want to change. You can add audio points by double clicking on the audio itself. So maybe there's a section of the video uh, that you wanted to silence or you wanted to make this part a little louder, but not everything else. You can actually do those sorts of things as well. Another thing you can do with that selection tool that we talked about before is maybe this section is incorrect. I can make a selection with my selection tool. And while it's selected, I can grab the audio that's just in that selection and silence it out or raise the volume up as well. Audio best practices, there's lots of different ways to do it. It depends on if you record your audio separately, if you're reading from a script. If you're reading from a script, there's a good chance you're recording your audio separately and bringing it in later. Just like we brought in media to the media bin, you'd bring in your audio later on. Uh, this video, like we did live here, was just recorded on the fly. So uh, lots of different ways you could do it. My best practice is when I'm doing videos like this, I do not separate the audio and video. That's my workflow. However, when I'm doing tutorial videos, I will record the audio separately and bring it in uh, after I've done some editing to the audio. Perfect. And Jason, we got a question in. Uh, I think it's a good question for this audience. It's from Saba. Saba wants to know, can you tell us basically about how tracks are ordered in the timeline? Yep, so the tracks are ordered based on something called uh, the Z order. So you know the X and Y axis, the Z axis allows you to stack things on top of each other. For example, let's go to our callouts area and we're gonna add a few callouts on top of the screen here. We'll just add them all over the place here just for fun. So these three pieces of media, these callouts, are all sitting on top of my screen recording. So you can see that it blocks what's behind it. If I were to move my track number one, if I were to grab this media and drag it on top of those, the callouts are still there. They're still part of the project, but they can't be seen because the screen recording is blocking it. If I move the screen recording, you'll actually see those callouts are still behind it. So the Z order is that whatever's on top of the piece of media on a higher track is what will be able to be seen. So you can actually move these different callouts around so that they're uh, obscuring or on top of or calling out specific sections of the screen. Uh, that's why my spotlight tool works because it's sitting on top of my screen recording. The same way as if I brought the screen recording above it, that callout is still there, but it's behind my recording, so I cannot see it. We actually do talk a lot about this as well, Ryan, in our deeper dive webinar um, when we talk about Camtasia and editing. Perfect. So Jason, I got a, a specific question here, but I'm wondering if you can answer it more globally. Uh, Heidi asks, can you add multiple cursor effects throughout the video to the same cursor? 
for example, could I have cursor smoothing on and the spotlight on? Um, but I know that also applies to other pieces of media. So can you add multiple effects to a single piece of media? Yep. So in this case, let's take these off for right now. It, right now, this recording has cursor smoothing on it. And I can see that by going over here and seeing that cursor smoothing has been added. If I wanted to add another cursor effect, for example, if I go to cursor effect and I wanted the cursor highlight tool, if I click and drag that down onto my media as well, I have both smoothing and highlighting on. So as the video plays where there's the cursor showing, you'll see that the cursor has a highlight on it. And you can do different things with the cursor highlighter. You can make it bigger, change its color, stuff like that. I believe each piece of media can handle up to three different types of um, effects being added to it. That's the same with behaviors and stuff like that as well. If I wanted a section of my video to have this highlight, but I don't want the rest of it, like as soon as we change the screen, if I don't want that highlighter there anymore, in order to remove the highlight from the next part of the screen, I would actually have to split this media into two different pieces of media and have the cursor effect that I didn't want there anymore in case like this highlight, just remove it. So the cursor highlight effect is affecting this piece of media, but at the split, it goes away because it's now a different piece of media and then it goes away. That's a deeper one, definitely a deeper one. And we can definitely get into that in those deeper ones. <laughs> yep. And Jason, when you were doing the um, showing our audience how to share, you kind of exposed the smart player and yep. we got a lot of questions about what that is. So can you just talk about what the smart player is? Sure. So uh, above the, uh, when we were going into the production, we had these options for MP4 only, and then there's these options for MP4 with Smart Player. So the Smart Player is a wrapper that goes around your video that allows for pieces of interactive functionality in Camtasia to work. Inside of Camtasia, there's four pieces of interactivity. There's the ability to do uh, clickable hotspots, so the area of your screen can be clicked on. You can do a table of contents. You can do quizzing right in line with your videos, and you can also do closed captioning. For those, any of those individual pieces or all of them to work in a video, you need to produce the video with a smart player to host locally or share it to a destination online that supports that, which as of right now is the TechSmith properties like screencast.com or TechSmith Relay. Um, if you're going to host a video yourself or in your LMS that has interactivity in it, you can absolutely um, produce videos with smart players and test that theory out. Um, if you have further questions on the interactivity and smart player, if you're inside the editor and you go up to the help menu, the second option there is a link directly to that video tutorials page that we used as our demo. And down here in the tutorial section, there is pieces about interactivity and, and creating with Camtasia's interactive feature set. Awesome, Jason. And we are running out of time, so I'm going to leave you on this page. And if you could scroll back up to the top, I do want to um, show everyone our webinar schedule because you mentioned the diving deeper and we had lots of questions about that. Yeah. So for all our attendees, uh, we do appreciate you being here today. And if you want to take a deeper dive, you can go to techsmith.com. And then under the support menu, there is a webinar section, uh, bottom right. You click on that, it'll take you to this page and you can see all of our upcoming webinars and we update that regularly. Um, so you'll be able to um, check this out at any point and see what's coming down the pipe. But that said, we are out of time today. So appreciate you all coming out. Uh, we got lots of questions and we appreciate all of your questions today. We will, this was recorded and we will send a follow up email out with the recording so you can go back and review it. And in that follow-up email, we also have links to some resources that you might find helpful, links to things like the tutorials that Jason just showed you, um, our assets, the TechSmith Academy, and even um, a link to the webinars page so you can see where the deeper dives are planned. I want to reiterate, we do have a four-question survey coming up as soon as you close the webinar. Um, that'll just help us once again continue to get better and provide better webinars for you as you come to them in the future. And then the last thing, if you ever need to get in touch with us, you can reach out to marketing at techsmith.com and we will be sure to put you in touch with the correct department that can help you with whatever your issue is. So thank you all for coming out. Please look forward to that email. It should be coming later today, um, maybe even tomorrow, depending on how quickly we can get the recording rendered. And other than that, please enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.